Hello and welcome. This is Rufamonger, my friends. The Street Fighter 6 closed beta test is now live. And I'd figure, well, let's showcase off the game. Let's showcase something actually very important that we didn't know the full details of. And that is the frame data. So let's get into it. So here we are in the beautiful world here of Street Fighter 6. And we're going to plop ourselves down an arcade machine and go into training mode. So here we are in training mode. And if you've seen previous videos on the channel, you might've seen the little frame data meter here. And it's very, very good because it teaches you a lot more than just, Hey, here's the frames like, which is important. Don't get me wrong. That's absolutely important. But just something like this here, Chun-Li sound like punch. Okay. So four frames start up 12 total frames. Good to know. And you might see there's a little bit of a color grading here. So the first three bars are the initial startup. The fourth bar is where it's active, where it can actually like hit the enemy. You can see here too, that's when the enemy starts being in yellow on the bar here. So there's three pinky ready, I don't know, my, my site's not so good, but three extra bars there, those are your active frames and the blue bars here at the end, those are your recovery frames where you're just simply reaching your hand back, right? So you get to see a lot of how just things work and it gets so much more in depth as we'll go into on a lot of factors. Like just something else basic, pokes. chun -Li, forward, medium punch is a poke, down medium kick is a poke. They both start up in seven frames. So you think, well, they have to be equal, right? Well, no, because you might notice here, even though they start at the same time, the forward medium punch poke only has 15 frames of recovery, down medium kick has 19 frames of recovery. And it shows you this, right? both in the numbers and you just tell by the bars as well. So if you were to say, try to whiff punish, which is a much bigger deal in this game, it is much easier to whiff punish this than it is to whiff punish this because you have four more frames to do so. So if you're scared the enemy's fishing to try to whiff punish, this has now taught you, okay, one move is better than the other for purposes of being safe from whiff punishes. So that's kind of the basic stuff though. I wanna get into the modifiers cause there's a lot and you absolutely will have to know them to succeed in Street Fighter VI. I know even just the concept of frame data can be overwhelming in and of itself. It's not easy, right? Like unless you've been here doing this thing for quite a while, it can be hard, it can be tricky. But thankfully, thanks to the great visual indicators, it should be easier than ever. But the thing is, well, there's just a lot of modifiers here. So say, I want to go Chun Li stand heavy punch, which is a good button in this game, by the way, a lot of range. And I want to go from that into her stance cancel. And now I want to do stance cancel and like kick, little poke. Like it, it just doesn't combo. But this is where modifiers come into play. So counter hits, hitting the enemy while they're trying to hit you. It changes frame data as it has in other previous Street Fighter games. And in this scenario, if the enemy is counter hit, we have two more frames of advantage here. As you can see here, our handy little bar says plus four. If the counter was not on, we only have two frames of advantage, but thanks to counter hit, we have four. And now, and now all of a sudden, that is an actual combo. You can see here, two hits. And since it is an actual combo, we can, well, combo out from it. And when you know it, obviously a lot bigger than just single hits, right? We get full combos thanks to it being a counter hit, but there's more modifiers yet now. This is new to Street Fighter. So we have counter hits. Once again, counter hits is hitting the enemy as they're starting their move. But now we have punish counters. Punish counters are hitting the enemy when the move is done. It's in its recovery frames. The blue tallies here you see here in the little frame data chart. So when the move is done, it tried to hit, it didn't hit one way or the other or it was blocked and it just has so much recovery, you can punish it. That's when punish counters happen now. And you see the hits a lot more substantial, big shotgun blast effect. And now look at that frame recovery here. So, Sand Heavy Punch is now plus six. So once again here, normally, plus two. On counter hit, plus four. And if it was a punish counter, so we punish a move with this, it is now plus six. So before on a counter hit, we could go into the big punch here and the stance cancel into the kick and that would be a combo. But something a bit more advanced here, going to stance cancel medium kick, it would connect, I guess, in a way, but it wouldn't combo. But with punch counter and we have those two additional frames to work with, all of a sudden now that's a natural combo, right? 
So now, if we know we have the punish counter, we can get an even bigger combo. Again, this is just one chun -Li example. There's many examples across the cast, right? So punish counter is a much more desirable effect to get than a regular counter hit. Because simply put, you get bigger combos, you get bigger things. Things that were not possible before are now possible. Like say here, we talked about pokes earlier. So her forward medium punch here, or back medium punch, it works either way. If you go into heavy lightning legs on punish counter, that does connect. On a regular counter hit or regular hit though, that is not a natural combo. Only on the biggest possible counter, the punish counter, does this become a natural combo because you need all that extra frame advantage. So that's another good example of why punish counter is extra good. And again, a punish counter is as easy as that right there. Someone tries to attack you, they miss, and then you attack them back with something quick. So for Chun-Li, once again here, the stand light kick, you can see five total frame startup, so very fast. Another good button is crouch medium kick, but it's a little slower, so this is faster. And then, oh, boom, punish counter, and then we can get bigger hits. Like say, for example, here, we go stand light kick and we use the drive rush factor. And we'll talk about drive rush in a little bit here. And drive rush, well, try as we might here, even point blank, mashing as hard as we can, that is just not a combo. Just doesn't work. But if we use the extra frame advantage from the punish counter, now look at this, isn't this pretty fancy? This was all off the back of a simple standing light kick, and that's almost 50%. All because you dared to do a button and whiff, and I caught your whiff with standing light kick. That is the power of punish counters, and obviously, you know, other gameplay systems like Drive Rush as well, right? So counter hits and punish counters, they alter your frame data, and you really, really need to take note of them because they lead to really big things. Now, speaking of important ways to alter frame data, let's talk that drive rush again here. Drive rush is a great way just to move forward. If you do it raw from parry, it only costs you a bar. If you do it from a hit, it'll cost you three bars. So that's more expensive, right? But it lets you get you know, big fancy combos that you otherwise might not get, right? So fair enough, fair enough. But the thing is besides just rushing forward and giving you a combo opportunity, it also alters the frame data. So let's take this stand medium punch here from Chun-Li. So by itself, plus six on hit, great. So it leads to stuff like that. That's a natural combo. You saw earlier we did the medium into the palm. Now the palm is eight frame startup, as you can see here. So that's not a natural combo. You needed the punish counter or well, the drive rush to change it because drive rush. Now you can see here, what does that say? Plus 10. Once again here, plus 10. Normally, it's six. So the drive rush gives you the same amount of frame advantage on your first hit and your first hit only that a punish counter, the big, like fancy counter does. So punish counter and drive rush, both take whatever move you have, whatever the frame data would be on hit or on block. As you see here, the move is plus one on block, right? Now it's plus five on block. So whatever the move you're doing is, it adds an additional four frames bonus for the attacker doing whatever they're doing. So this opens up new combo routes. The example earlier you saw with the whiff punish, that combo was possible thanks to the drive rush giving the stand medium extra frame advantage so we can combo into the palm and then going from there. So now, hopefully you're following along with me. So let's look at this. So we have our base moves, plus six. We have modifier number one, counter hits. That gives you plus two extra frames. Modifier number two is punish counter, gives you plus four extra frames. And drive rush also gives you plus four extra frames. And you might notice there, the number's way bigger this time, right? Because they do stack. So if the enemy is in a punish counter okay state, and for whatever reason you hit them with a drive rush, then that is a total of plus eight. In any situation where it's applicable for bonuses to stack, they will. So it's kind of a big deal. Now, there's another modifier yet that gives that big old plus four bonus. And it's not on hit, it's actually in the burnout state. So the burnout state is when you run out completely of your drive gauge, and then well, stuff just sucks. Like you look all crappy and gray, like Luke's sweating here. Uh, you have no ability to use meter at all in any way, shape or form. That's not good, because well, meters, your life in this game. And now all of a sudden, you get big time frame advantage here. So 
says here that was plus five on block. Normally, that's plus one on block. So if you're in the burnout state, any move you do that is blocked, regardless of what it is, how fast or how slow it is, is now an additional plus four on block. This makes unsafe moves safe. You can go for moves you're normally not allowed to go for and not be punished for them. Uh, this makes moves that are just kind of, eh, you know, plus one. That's nice. Nothing to write home about. But now this is plus five when they're in burnout, which means, well, geez, Louise, everything you can think of is a frame trap. Like even slow moves like Palm, Palm's eight frame startup. That's a three frame gap. So all of a sudden, uh, someone like Luke, who I think his fastest move is four frames. That means he can't hit any button. In this situation, he can easily jab out. But when burnout, no longer. He's stuck. When you're in burnout, basically, you have to block a lot more than you currently do. And keep in mind, too, when you're in burnout, this is when chip damage starts happening. And chip kills in this game. So if you're stuck blocking, you are in some bad trouble. And plus, you know, uh, drive impact against the wall turns into a dizzy. That gives you a full combo. Like, stuff just really, really, really sucks, is what I'm trying to say. And, and it sucks all the more because now you're not allowed to challenge as much as you used to. Uh, things that you would normally go for after, like, say, a block string, maybe you can't do it anymore. Because every single move that you block is ridiculously more advantaged than it would be in your normal state. So basically, for a myriad of reasons, do not go into burnout state if you can help it. Because it probably is going to lose you to the round. So hopefully this video helped you learn the importance of frame data in the game and what it can unlock for you once you know everything that is available to you. Knowing what gives you plus two, what gives you plus four, or just knowing what modifies frame data to begin with, on top of knowing frame data itself, is gonna be extra key in this game because there's a lot of additional modifiers. Normally before you only had to worry about, okay, what's my regular combo? What's my counter hit combo? Like Chun-Li, once again, our example. If I think I'm going to hit you, but I don't think it's going to be a counter hit, I can get that, right? It's all right, I guess. But if I think you're going to mash and I think you're going to get a counter hit, then I can get this combo instead, which does significantly more damage, right? Because the extra plus two frames of advantage from the counter hit means I'm now at plus six, which means my elbow, which is five frames, will connect and naturally combo, whereas... Normally, no counter hit, four frames. Therefore, my uh, five framer wouldn't connect, right? Just not a natural combo. So knowing, especially in Street Fighter, more than a lot of other fighting games, knowing when you're going to start a, just a basic thing and knowing if this is going to be a block string or I think I'm going to catch you mashing is very important. Like one example here. You've seen this enough times now to understand this is a basic Chun-Li B, &B right? Stand medium, five frame startup, plus one on block. Crouch medium, six frame startup, right? So the thing is, and the problem is, I lose, right? If they just go for a jab right after the fact, I get beat up. Because Luke's uh, crouch jab is four frames, so it's just faster than my next move I'm going for. So then I have to tailor my combos. Okay, is he going to try to jab out? And if I know he's going to try to jab out, I go for my own stand light punch instead, which is four frame startup, and thanks to the plus one, means his jab will never win. And now, because that jab has two extra frames of advantage, seven frames, when you know it, that poke is seven frames, right? So now we can use that as a combo. And there you go, right? So you always got to keep things in mind, right? Frames can decide things a lot. That situation's great. If you know the frame data... Then you know when to jab out of the combo and make the combo not a thing. And when you know they know that, then you got to start tailoring around. And then all of a sudden, now I'm going to do something faster. And I'm making combo relying on the fact I know you're going to mash and thus get the extra advantage from counter hit. And then I get my own combo. So if you know this stuff, you know this stuff. If you don't, I know it sounds terrifying. But this is what Street Fighter is. And this is a lot of what fighting games are. But once again, this training mode is incredibly robust. There. Everything you could ever hope for is pretty much in here from the basics to the more advanced settings. It's really good. So my friends, that's a look at Street Fighter 6 specifically, frame data, and how uh, frame data differences matters a lot, 
how extra little bits of frame data advantage can help you, uh, unique to the Street Fighter VI systems, and just some general stuff, I guess. And, well, I guess that's about it. So if you uh, were helped out by this video or you found it otherwise interesting, spare a like. That'd be nice. Be a pal, right? And otherwise, we're at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some Street Fighter.